Excellencies, distinguished delegates, the human rights situation in Myanmar has morphed into a never-ending nightmare, away from the spotlight of global politics. Since I last addressed this council in September, about Myanmar armed conflict has escalated and spread to nearly every corner of the country. Three years of military rule have inflicted and continue to inflict unbearable levels of suffering and cruelty on people in Myanmar. Three years of military operations designed to repress, terrify, dehumanize and destroy. The subversion of the people's right freely to elect their civilian leaders, crackdowns on all forms of opposition and dissent, total abuse of power and impunity. The depth of this crisis impacting all facets of life is emblematic of the persistent failure to respect democratic norms and fundamental freedoms. Development goes into freefall, conflict proliferates, the human toll is mounting. Credible sources have verified that over 4,603 civilians, including 659 women and 490 children, have been killed at the hands of the military since February 2021. The actual toll is certainly much higher. Brutal acts are carried out by trained soldiers against their own people. Around 400 civilians, including 113 women, have been burned alive after execution. Just a few weeks ago, a video on social media showed alleged pro-military fighters burning alive two captives accused of being part of the armed op opposition. This is a chilling disregard for human life. Mr. President, the intensification of violence since li late October, when ethnic armed groups launched a series of coordinated attacks across the country, has triggered even further devastation and punishing retaliations by the military. Heavy weapons are today causing a majority of civilian deaths as the military has increasingly directed its war planes at towns and cities. In January 24 alone, 145 out of 232 verified civilian deaths. Over 60% were attributable to these airstrikes and artillery attacks. Over half of those victims were women or children. This is horrific. In Shan, Rakhine and Kachin states in particular, the military appears again to be provoking inter-ethnic tensions by employing ultra-nationalist militias and forcibly recruiting members of ethnic commu communities to attack them. The military's announcement in early February of a military service law under which all men 18 to 35 and women aged 18 to 27 could be subjected to mandatory conscription without any appeal process is extremely worrying and symbolic of the absence of the rule of law. In some places, the military has abducted individuals, while in others, they have threatened communities with burning their villages unless their young people are made to serve. In Rakhine State, we have heard reports that displaced Rohingya youth are being offered money, food, and even citizenship if they join the ranks of those who displaced them years ago. They are threatened with punishment if they refuse. And reports of forced recruitment, including child recruitment, have already proliferated among many warring parties. Throughout Myanmar, other sweeping violations of fundamental rights and the rule of law continue unabated. People fear they can be arrested for anything at any time. More than 20,000 opponents of the military, including 3,909 women, are still languishing in detention. It is deeply shocking to read my office's reports of systemic use of torture against political detainees in police stations, military interrogation centers, and prisons. We have received multiple reports of detainees being subjected to severe forms of ill-treatment during questioning, with many dying from their injuries due to the deliberate denial or lack of any medical treatment. 
overall some 1,658 individuals, including 111 women, have died in the military's custody, either in places of detention or after being arrested in village raids. In January alone, 48 civilians died while detained, more than one person every day. And compounding this entire crisis is the military's stranglehold over humanitarian assistance, preventing humanitarian workers from reaching the millions in need of aid. While the UN has persevered through this crisis, staying and delivering, despite enormous challenges, the international community needs to remember the lessons of the Rosenthal Report and continue to prevent further atrocities in any way possible. The UN needs the full backing of member states when it insists on protection of civilians and ensuring future accountability. Mr. President, I want to ring again the alarm bells about Rakhine State, which is engulfed even deeper in spiraling violence since November. Just yesterday, military naval vessels shelled a market in Rakhine's capital, Sitwe, reportedly killing at least 16 civilians and injuring over 80 others. This violence impacts every community, many of which are still reeling from Cyclone Mokka last year. I note the appeal to the international community issued last week by 40 Rohingya organizations worldwide not to repeat the failings of the past. After suffering decades of systematic discrimination, repression, massive forced displacement and other serious human rights violations, the Rohingya today remain essentially imprisoned in villages and internment camps. More than a million continue to languish in refugee camps in Bangladesh. In Myanmar, they continue to be denied citizenship rights and free movement, and there is currently no prospect for safe and sustainable return. Since November, amid communications blackouts, sources indicate that nearly 200 people have died in Rakhine, of which at least 50 were Rohingya. Over 150,000 people fled their homes seeking safety. Most Rohingya, however, are not allowed to flee. Military imposed restrictions have almost completely disrupted the delivery of life-saving humanitarian aid. Homes have been burned down. Supply routes connecting Rakhine to other parts of Myanmar have been closed, creating an acute food shortage and significant price hikes. Most families are now surviving on one meal a day. We have received reports of malnutrition-related health issues among children, and deaths of several pregnant women lacking access to medical services have also been reported. Up to 5,000 Rohingya undertook perilous boat journeys last year in their search for a safe haven. Hundreds of others have been detained as they seek to escape to other parts of Myanmar. My office has received multiple credible reports that hundreds of Rohingya fleeing violence are being prevented from entering Bangladesh. I appeal to all member states to ensure international refugee pay protection to people fleeing conflict and persecution in Myanmar. Mr. President, four years ago, the International Court of Justice called on Myanmar to halt any activities that could violate provisions of the Genocide Convention. It ordered that the authorities protect Rohingya communities, preserve evidence of wrongdoing against them, and create conditions conducive to a safe, dignified, and voluntary return to their places of origin. Yet, the military continues to engage in the same callous, heavy-handed behavior. These councils must act on these alarming warning signs. I repeat my call for the immediate cessation of operations in or around civilian areas, for the full protection of all civilians, for the military to release all political prisoners, and for full compliance with international human rights law. I repeat my call to the international community to refocus its energy on preventing atrocities against all people in the country, including the Rohingya, notably by taking meaningful, effective, targeted action to end the military's access to arms, jet fuel, and foreign currency that it needs to sustain its campaign of repression against civilians. I call for a new approach by ASEAN and states with influence to engage all actors, including the national unity government, ethnic organizations, 
and the broader civil society to create a pathway to the restoration of democracy and civilian rule. This is the moment to enable the democratic movement to build an inclusive political consensus to end this human rights crisis. For the last three years, people in Myanmar have sacrificed everything and kept alive their aspirations for a better and safer future. They need the, interna the entire international community to support them. Merci. Thank you.